Right, now we're going to have a look at a, another type of calculator. This is the Casio FX85 GT Plus, uh, and it claims to have natural VPAM, V-P-A-M, which I think, um, I don't know what the letters stand for, but I think it means that basically you enter in the um, data that you want to pretty much as it looks on the screen. So I'm going to do this calculation here, F equals 1 over 2 pi, root LC on this calculator um, and you can see the different way in which it, um, it it's done. So let's uh, have a look at that um, calculation. So the calculation then is going to be F naught for the resonant frequency is equal to 1 over 2 pi root L C. Let's put some values. L equals, let's say, 2 millihenries, and C will make it equal to, I don't know, uh, 5 microfarads. And let's put that in. So this re would refer to then a series or parallel tuned circuit with an L, uh, a C, and an L, an L and a C in it. So, um, Let's, without any further ado, have a go at it on the calculator. Now the calculator is a lot more uh, complex than um, the uh, T, the Texas Instrument one. Um, and as I say, it works in a different way. So I'm gonna push it up a little bit so we can see the bottom row of keys. And um, I hope you can see uh, enough to allow this to go ahead. So if I press on uh, and all clear, then I've got a zero then in the display there and that's not all that clear um, but uh, I think you can probably see enough so if I was going to put the cut the um, equation in I put it in as I read it off the screen so one and you can see it coming up in the top left hand corner net now divided by and now I need to open some brackets because I want the whole term on the bottom so I open the brackets and say two times, and then I have to press shift for pi on this one, shift, and the pi is down the bottom, pi. And now times, again, the square root sign. And when I press the square root sign, it, it does the opening bracket, if you like, for the square root sign automatically. Now I'm gonna put in the value for L, and that's, 2 times 10 to the, there's a button there at the bottom, which says time 10 to the x, and I just put it in as as I would say it, minus 3, 2 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay, now I'm going to put in times, and I'm going to put in c, which is, uh, I think we said 5 microfarads, that's 5 uh, times 10 to the minus 6, now I've got to close the bracket, it opens the bracket automatically, but I close the bracket, okay, and I press equals. And the advantage then of this calculator is that you've got 1591.5 uh, hertz, in other words, nearly 1600 hertz. Um, so the answer then, if we have a look at it, is equal to uh, 159 one point five four. I mean, this is unnecessary pre pre uh, precision, but there it is on the screen, 1591 hertz. And you've got this big sort of cursor button in the middle, and you can replay through the calculation there and make sure that you've entered it correctly. So you can see then uh, that after pressing equals, if you like, the um, result comes up but the original data entry remains and you can go ahead and correct that data entry if you need to if you've made an error for example you can go back to here and um, I believe you can press delete which goes back one place and instead of having two millihenries if I wanted three millihenries I can change it at that point and press equals and 
the new answer then with three millihenries is one two nine nine hertz. Um, I'm not skillful enough on this calculator to be able to give you much more of a demonstration, but I think that shows the um, the different approach um, to to data entry. Now, some people uh, may well prefer this, uh, and some people will prefer the simplicity of the um, Texas Instrument. If I do the same calculation on the Texas Instruments calculator there, I press on, then I need to work out the LC first, so I would be putting in 2 EE um, 3 change sign for 2 millihenries times 5 EE 6 change sign for um, uh, 5 microfarads equals and then I would take the square root of it okay and then I would multiply that um, times 2 and then times pi equals and then I would turn it upside down 1 over x and I've got the same answer there 15915 and then if I want to see that in kilohertz I press shift and then engineering um, and there it is in with the uh, small zero three so they work pretty much the same I suppose the advantage uh, if you see it as an advantage is that you can have a look at the um, equation there on the screen and go through it for example I can change that one back to the original 2 for 2 millihenries um, by pressing the delete key 2 and equals so that allows you to if you like check your data entry the disadvantage is that it becomes a fairly cumbersome uh, equation up there particularly if they get longer and also it separates you from actually what you're doing a little bit um, but having said that they are recommended for um, students at school and um, you know I would have no problem at all if anybody found this as a, a, a better alternative and a better way of doing the data entry um, the most important thing is as I say learn how to drive it there are many many more modes on this one than on um, the uh, um, the Texas Instrument one and and so um, there are for example some setups here that you can do shift setup and you've got you know lots of options for you know radian fixed normal scientific I'm not sure that it's got um, engineering I mean that is a point actually whether it's got engineering um, mode I presume it has Scientific 0 to 9, I think maybe we put 3 in. Yes, there we are. And I've done, I've put scientific 3 in. I think that's the equivalent of, of engineering because now I've got 1.59 times 10 to the 3. In other words, 1.59 kilohertz there. So I think it'll do everything uh, that the TI-30XA will do and more, um, but at the uh, price of uh, a little bit of complexity. Um, as you go through it. So there you go. It, it may well be the way to go uh, for you. Um, and uh, on the other hand, the TI-30X um, may be the way to go. Whichever one you choose, um, read the handbook uh, and learn how to use it. Thank you very much.